Tell us about some of the experiments that you've worked on at Carnegie Mellon in the area of privacy. Well, um, there are many of them. Um, mm -hmm. I can tell you, broadly speaking, uh, what we do, and then I'm happy to discuss specific uh, examples. Uh, broadly speaking, um, I call what we are doing behavior economics of privacy. Uh, behavior economics is a branch of economics uh, which uh, combines traditional economic methodologies and analysis with uh, uh, a more sound uh, psychological understanding of uh, the decision process of the individual agent mm -hmm. um, and how the decision process may be sometimes biased, uh, meaning um, systematically deviating from what is the theoretical or rational decision-making path. And uh, I find that these kind of biases, which have been explored for many years by behavior economists and decision, decision researchers, have a great application in the area of privacy. Because uh, we often try to understand how people make decisions about the, uh, the privacy of their data, what to share and what to protect, how to value privacy. And we realized that we cannot just take a pure rational trade-off uh, approach. We need to understand uh, what kind of biases may affect those decisions and those evaluations. Mm -hmm. And what have you found? Um, let's see. Some of, uh, some of the things we have found are, for instance, um, the paradox of control. Um, often, if you, if you check the privacy literature, you find uh, a, a connection between control and privacy in that uh, privacy is often seen or depicted as a control on uh, personal information flows. Uh, and, and that, from a normative perspective, makes sense in, in that we want people to have control on their personal data. But from a positive perspective, in terms of what is the real consequence of giving us more control on our own data, well, our studies and our experiments um, suggest that the more people feel in control of their data, even though they may not actually have real control, but the more they feel in control, the more likely they become to uh, expose uh, sensitive information about them, even when the objective risks associated with that revelation are increasing. We call it the paradox of control because uh, these uh, results suggest that people, uh, when they feel in control, they become actually uh, more likely to take risk. Mm -hmm. So in the increase of people feeling comfortable. Yes, it can be an, an issue of overconfidence. An analogy mm -hmm. which I use when I try to uh, present these results is uh, uh, studies done on how helmets mm -hmm. for motorcycle riders or, or seat belt for car drivers tend to make people uh, drive faster, take more risk, and maybe end up with more incidents. It's one of those unintended consequences which come when you we you try also to, 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 to pass initiatives to, to help people. Mm -hmm. And in the area of data and data privacy, uh, have you observed uh, a sort of differing attitude at all between, between cultures, say American culture versus <coughs> European or, or Asian, for example? So the, 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 it's a beautiful question. So I'll, I'll, we could probably talk and chat for, for quite a while about yeah. this issue. So let me tell you just briefly what, what, what I feel that the, the, the main points here are. And I put it under the caveat that this is a research ongoing that we are doing. Mm -hmm. So we still don't have all the answers. Maybe we'll never have all the answers, but there are a few things we, we, which we found. First, uh, if you see the literature on privacy, you realize that privacy is a need that all cultures have and, uh, and across times, human beings have. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not, as some claim, a modern invention. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 there is indirect evidence of a need for privacy even in uh, cultures, the Roman or Greek cultures, 2,000 years ago. So it seems to be an innate need for the human being. That said, uh, this need that we all have takes different forms and shapes depending on uh, uh, the culture you come from. So what may be private for an Italian may not be particularly so private or sensitive for an American or for, for, for an Indian. So we, we do know that there are these differences. 
we are studying them using online social networks which offer a, a great kind of experiment in the wide of, uh, of self-disclosure and self revelation. Mm -hmm. For instance, we are observing how uh, maybe students who come to CMU, Carnegie Mellon University, who come to CMU from India, whether there are information revelational pattern, their signature information revelation is different from uh, American students, mm -hmm. when they arrive to CMU, and whether four years later, after they have spent uh, some years in the American culture, they become more similar to uh, their American counterpart students, also in terms of self-disclosures. Self mm -hmm. I'd like to examine this in, in a bit of a current, a bit of a, the frame of the current events. Um, from what I've seen recently, privacy issues ha are, are looked upon so, uh, somewhat differently. Um, currently, Google is being uh, has been looked at for what's been known as a, the SpyFi scandal, meaning the uh, collection of data as they drove around and uh, did the Street View pictures. Um, their CEO even famously said on CNN two weeks ago, to, and, and he admitted later it was a joke, but he said, if you don't like Street View, you can move. Um, and then your house isn't necessarily taken out there anymore. The responses in Britain, Germany, Japan, and Australia in particular uh, were met with stronger investigation, um, a deeper look at what they were doing, and are still ongoing in those places. In the United States, last Friday, they announced, the Federal Trade Commission announced that they were done looking into the matter and they considered the issue closed. On a cultural level, um, what does this mean for a company like a Microsoft trying to create a global privacy policy when, in reading just simply the headlines, seeing the differences of the approaches, is there really a cultural barrier in, with, with respect to data and how it's protected? Um, now, there are very significant differences, not just in terms of culture, but also in terms of legislation. And, uh, and then, mm -hmm. of course, the, 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 the differences in legislation are correlated with these differences in culture. Um, in, uh, in the European Union and in European countries in general, uh, we tend to um, approve of, or at least be comfortable with, uh, uh, government intervention in the economy, including the idea that privacy should be regulated. And traditionally, um, privacy is seen as a, as a human right, uh, a value, uh, independently of the actual economic trade-off uh, associated with the protection of the revelation of data. The American legislator historically has taken a very different approach, not just now, but going back uh, through the years. Much more utilitarian. And I'm using the term in, uh, with no negative connotation, but in the practical, in the practical sense that um, privacy is uh, less of a wholly human right and more of a, of a need, something good, which has to be balanced with uh, the needs of other parties, such as uh, free speech, for instance. So the American legislator has taken a very uh, ad hoc approach, a more laissez-faire. Uh, unless there is really a problem, don't regulate it. The European legislator has taken a very hands-on approach. We have to protect privacy regardless of the type of data we're talking about, uh, and regardless of what actual economic consequences may derive for the individual or for society when data is being shared. So the difference in reactions you see, you were describing between certain European countries, such as Spain, going after Google and the FTC, can be partly explained with this uh, innate difference in terms of uh, legislative intervention. The, the, the hope or the faith in the free market as a tool for solving uh, problems, including privacy problems without intervention, versus the realization in Europe that the free market not always achieve the best uh, optimal balance mm -hmm. between the needs of the different parties.